you go. Really need to invest in like an egg timer or something. All right, here we go. So I'm going to put something here. I'm going to put a print bool switch. Because I want to see what number is being passed by the system uh, for debugging purposes. A nice print statement will handle that quite nicely. Just like that. Uh, now, player period parent equals elevator. So that is how you parent two objects together. And don't forget, I'm dragging elevator on there. I'm going to state what that is. I'm going to also state what player is over in the sidebar here. So, so if you have a character in game that's reaching for a gun, you can state what that gun is, and that's how you parent the gun to the player. This is just the unhip version of that. Translate this one. This is just uh, taking and moving the platform up when I touch it, when I touch that trigger. So this is code that we've already touched base on. It's just the atypical transform period translate, but I'm moving something. I'm moving the elevator, and that's why that's there. Just like that, times Ella speed. So nothing new there. We've covered a lot of rotates, but not translates, maybe. That's the only difference. But that's how you translate something instead of rotate. All right, so let's save this. And let's designate some stuff out here. So right here, this little trigger is your up, down. And it says, can't do something because it's compilating uh, a script. Now, Unity loves doing this. It's one of those things I love about Unity. So this is how you handle that when it happens. And it will happen a lot. Uh, first off, save your scene. Okay. Just like that, save that out. And this is how I handle it. I quit Unity. <laughs> and then I open Unity back up. And for some odd reason, that works just well. Oh, and this one's got, now it shows compilation errors. Okay, and right here is my compilation compile error thing. Okay, so what's going on here? On function, on trigger stay. On trigger is one word. Okay. And time delta time. Time period delta time. There we go. Okay, now that that's all worked out, let's close that out. And let's go back to the scene and try to assign that variable to, or the script to trigger. There we go. And what's player? Well, player is the first person controller. This is trigger one. Now, my elevator trigger gets elevator up. Okay. And now it's asking for a few things. What's the elevator? Well, the elevator is this. So elevator is right here. And first person controller gets monitor player. 
to and from. Okay, well, let's traverse this elevator or let's cheat. Let's go up here. This in Y is 14.54. So we'll copy that. And from in Y, because to do from, just like that. Very cool. All right, another thing is these are triggers. So I have to mount them as triggers. And what's gonna happen is this trigger is actually going to travel with the elevator. So I'm gonna parent those two together. Did some funny things there. Hold on, let's see what kind of funny things, and why that did funny things. So this is the elevator, this is the trigger. Hmm. Let's play this and see what happens. There's two audio listeners. Okay, no problem. There's two cameras within the scene. Here's a main camera, which now can get out, go away. All right, perfect. Let's see what happens. So I get on the first trigger, go to the second trigger, it starts going up in the air, I get off, and there it is. Now how do I get back down? This looks like one of those pink erasers when I was a kid. The kind that you ripped apart and threw at people. Yep, that's exactly what it looks like. All right, now the only thing is, these things are not gonna be renderable, so if it wants to turn it into a pink eraser, I don't really care, um, because at the end, I'm going to take the mesh render off and it's the collider that really accounts. All right. So in the next video, let's work on down.